Okay, so I get Sarah here tonight, or actually today with me. Uh, it's probably morning for you and it's evening for me it's because you're in the US and you're in, I'm in Switzerland. So thank you very much for yes. being here with me, Sarah. It's a huge pleasure to interview you and uh, hearing all about you and all about your story and uh, you know how you built your business. So tell us a little bit about who you are and uh, what you do in your business. Okay, so my name is, like Daniel said, Sarah Thompson, and my business um, uh, website, I actually have two business websites, so I'm just going to start with the first one, which is ThompsonBizSolutions.com, and then um, my newer program for smaller businesses is called MoreMoneyMentoring.com, and um, basically what I do in my business is I help other uh, business owners grow their business. That's my main focus. And my background is in corporate finance. And so I learned how to um, do some turnarounds for companies that didn't have a lot of money. And I've been able to apply that to helping people that are early stage, uh, growth stage businesses to grow their businesses exponentially. Um, so not only have I helped my clients grow their businesses, in some cases 10 times in less than three years, but I've also done that for my own business. So let me start a little bit at the beginning. It's not really the beginning. It's not my birth story. But let's start with when I really became what I consider a true entrepreneur in that I um, made a commitment that I would never work for somebody again. I made a commitment that I would not have a plan B. I actually stated I will not work for anyone again. And that was like a big thing for me. And actually some people in my personal life said to me, you can't say that. And if you say to me, you can't say that, I have this sort of rebel without a cause and I will do it. So as soon as I got that challenge back, from the people that were closest to me, I said, oh yeah, that's what I'm going to do. And I had to have that mindset before I really truly committed to being an entrepreneur. Prior to that, I had a business and sort of floundered around and did some things that weren't really, didn't fit with me, but, um, and then I went back to working in the corporate world. I, I did that sort of wishy-washy sort of thing. And then I decided there was no way, absolutely no way, that I could work for someone else as having them as an employer and me being an employee. That dynamic did not work for me. That doesn't mean that I can't help people and help clients, right? It just meant I couldn't actually work for somebody. I had to work for myself and have that kind of freedom to design my own thing, right? So. I got fired three times in two years. I had no money. I had eighty thousand dollars in debt. I um, found myself saying, "I can't work for anyone else." I made that commitment. I want to start a business. What the hell am I going to do? I don't know really how to run a business. I don't know anything about it. So I did my default thing, which when I don't know what to do, I go to a bookstore and I walk around and I hope I find a bunch of books that tell me what to do, right? And so I found a couple, one was, um, thank you for firing me. And you know, that helped my mindset of like really being grateful that I got fired three times in two years because I learned through that what I didn't want to do, right? It told me everything I did not want to do in my life. And so I had to really work on that. And then I had to work on how am I going to start a business and what am I going to do? Oh, so I, I immediately went to the easiest thing, right? What's the easiest way that I can make money? Now, I've been in corporate finance, so the easiest way for me to make money was to do the lowest level finance thing I could think of, right? Because I could get hired doing that in my sleep, which was bookkeeping. It was horrible. I hated it, right? I hadn't done bookkeeping for years, but it was a way that I could easily get, I mean, Who's not going to hire me as a bookkeeper? It was easy. So I charged $45 an hour to set up QuickBooks and do bookkeeping. That was my, that was my grand business plan, right? And I didn't make any money because I hated it. And I wasn't charging any, I was charging $45 an hour, right? It's 
So I was like, well, this isn't really going to work, so I better try something else. So I was like, well, what's sort of another level up that I can do to help people? So I, I said, I really don't want to charge by the hour because that's very limiting. So let me try some project work, right? And I sort of floundered with that, like, how do I charge for it so that I don't get screwed, right? You know, that whole fear of, like, I'll, I'll, you, you quote a project, but then, um, what do they call it? Pro project creep, what is scope creep or some, some nonsense, that you're not going to be able to manage your time within that project and you're going to work all kinds of hours and you're not going to make decent money, right? So I went through all of that. I posted one ad on Craigslist, one free ad, saying that I would do business plans, right? Do you need a business plan? I'm here. I had an attorney call me on behalf of a client from another state saying, hey, we need a business plan. So I was like, okay, I'll do the business plan. And I did it pretty affordably. At that time, I think I charged $1,000. And um, that one attorney has referred seven clients to me. Three years later, I now do not do any project work. I only work on retainer. For my high end clients, actually, all of them are by referral, right? And when I say high end, I don't mean that they're up here. I just mean that they are beyond a certain level in their business. They're not just starting. They're not. Um, they're not doing all the things that new business owners are doing, right? For business, for business plans, everyone that wants a business plan usually is brand, brand new. And um, these one-on-one -on -one clients that I work with have been in business for one, two, three years, right? They already have some experience. They've already like done their business cards and things like that. They've already sort of thought about their model. They've already tried a few things and failed and tried a few things and succeeded. So those were the clients that I got and I set a um, retainer uh, model where every month they paid me for my services. And so that was a game changer. And the, the problem that I had with the retainer model originally was this fear that it was going to be like working for someone. That they would then own me in a way that I did not ever want to be owned again. Right? And so I had a real resistance to it. Uh, I'd say the first year and a half of business, I, I didn't want to go there because I felt like they would think that I was at their beck and call, that I was very similar to an employee because of that sort of, okay, we're paying this person every month, we need to get some something out of them, right? Some, some productivity or some, uh, you know, some people think of their employees as like, you have to squeeze every drop of, of value out of your employee, right? And so I thought, well, you know, if you're doing regular kind of work for someone, how is that going to change the dynamic? If I'm doing project work, that's freedom, right? I can do whatever project I want at any time. I don't have any schedule. I don't have any um, regular commitments, right, other than that project. So I really had to get over that. Like, it, it took me a, some work to, like, really get over that fear of working for someone again. And this is how I did it. I obviously had a fear of being fired, right? I've been fired three times in two years, so it's like, I don't want to get fired again, right? But if I have enough clients that I spread that risk of being fired, then I don't have that fear because it doesn't matter. If one client for some reason fires me, it could be because they don't like something I said or it could be because the business needs changed and they don't really need me anymore. I mean, there have been a million reasons, right? Um, I'm going to be okay. Because it's only one client that I have to replace. And it might not even have to, right? Yeah. So it's not a, uh, a feel, you, you lose that feeling of desperation. And that is actually what allows you to exponentially grow your business. Right? Yeah. You yeah. don't have that fear that's holding you back. I, I, I use this, I've, I've been using this image, really just the last few weeks I've been thinking about it. Um, it's like a trampoline. So 
if you try to jump on the ground, you can only get so high, right? But if you get up to the trampoline and start jumping, how, how much higher can you get, right? Yeah. You already have a base of income. You have so much more opportunity once you can get to a consistent, steady base of income that you really, truly can jump super high, right? Yeah. Yeah. But when you're trying to jump from the ground, it's like you're like this. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah. And then you jump and then you fall, then you jump, right? Exactly. And it's like you don't have that uh, sense of security. What I say is the only, there's only two things I like about working for someone else a, a, a consistent income and um, being able to talk to other people, like going into the office and talk to talking to people. So since I figured that out, those were the only two things I had to solve, right? To make it not at all attractive to work for somebody, right? Yeah. So as long as I have a consistent income, which means I have income coming in every month that I can rely on for however long, you know, a client stays with me, right? I ask for a 12 month um, commitment, but I, um, actually don't believe in like holding someone to like uh, captive. I believe like if I'm not providing value, then the person should be able to leave. Like if it's not working for them. Exactly. So I have a 30 day opt out clause. So, so everyone I work with, they can opt out whenever they need to. And that's okay. okay. Right? So it just me, gives me a little bit of notice. So right? tell, tell me more about the, uh, the transition there. I want to hear about that uh, because there's a lot of, uh, you know, the entrepreneurs that I talk to, um, you know, they made six figures, which is great. Um, um, and sometimes even beyond, sometimes, I mean, I just talked to somebody yesterday who made, who made seven, seven figures. But yeah. um, there's one of, you know, one of their biggest challenges is that their income is, instable, is not stable. Yes. Uh, you know, they, yeah. may, they may make 100 grand in a month, um, but yes. then maybe the next month it's zero. And that's not necessarily a rational problem. You know, it's not like they're starving. But it's right. more of an emotional problem. It's a real challenge yes. emotionally. So tell me about how you, what did you change in your business to make that transition happen, to move away from the hourly or the project-based work towards the retainer, towards the recurring income? Okay, yeah, that's simple. I offer an unlimited model. Mm -hmm. So that's it. Um, so the model is I'm on retainer. It's unlimited. Okay. And so... I could set the pricing much higher for an unlimited model. Um, and it's counterintuitive, but I can actually um, spend less time on it. Yeah, that's, that's an interesting point there that you mentioned because I, that's, a lot of, that's, that's something that a lot of people fear as well. It's like when they, when they, they think about when they offer a retainer and you know, just to clarify what a retainer is, a retainer is nothing else than um, offering you know, a, a year-long program where people pay on a monthly basis or an unlimited program where people pay on a monthly basis. That's, that's the whole idea. And um, a lot of people fear that when they say, well, you can have access whenever you want to me, that they will, you know, the clients will then use this and call them at any given time, you know, at four o'clock in right. the morning. So yes. how, first of all, how do, you, how do you make sure that, well, first of all, your clients don't call you at four o'clock in the morning. And second, right. what's your experience with that transition? And, you know, do you feel like it, people use that or how, how, what's your experience with that? Well, you know, you must know the answer, right? It's, I do know the answer, yes, but I want to hear from you. <laughs> you but we, we agree on this one that you only work with ideal clients, right? Yes. So the clients that I work with, my number one policy for my red velvet rope that you cannot work with me as a client is respect for my time. That's it. It's my number one. So, um, all that means is respect for my time. It doesn't mean that I have all kinds of limitations and that I ex even, even that I express those limitations. It just means that when my largest client calls me on a Saturday, they apologize and say, hey, I'm sorry I'm calling you on a Saturday, but somebody in my family got checked into the hospital, right? Because they need me at that minute. And it's okay that they called me on a Saturday. I'm okay with that. And the only thing is if they don't respect it, right? That's really the only thing that bothers me about it is a lack of respect. It's not actually that somebody's interrupting me. If somebody needs me badly enough to call me on a Saturday, then I'm okay with answering the phone and talking to them. 
and I have what I call the back phone, right? So they, they, these retainer clients that are paying me a significant amount of money every single month for a minimum of a year can call me at any time. And if I can answer the phone, I do. And if I can't, I call them back. That's it. It's simple. They can text me. They can call me. They can get to me, right? This is the, I learned this from, from attorneys, right? I remember uh, as a kid, my father had an attorney, and it was like, you know what? You can never get him to even call you back, right? You can't get him on the phone. You can't get him to call you back. And, the, and if you have an attorney on retainer and you can never reach them, you don't want to have that person as your attorney, right? It's like so frustrating. So that was what I did that um, I'd say differentiated my services from a lot of my competitors, right? Because yeah. it's not hard to reach me. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I don't... And, and, you know, I don't mind talking to someone on the phone if they have a crisis. Yeah. So what is that worth to somebody? Like, what what does that give them for security to know that they can call you? Doesn't mean they will, right? And there's, and see, this is the thing is somehow, magically, not all my clients are in crisis at the same time, right? Yeah, yeah. That's so important. You know, what, the thing that you mentioned there as well, I think that we have to highlight that because, um, you know, there's... There's people you're meant to serve and others you're not. And if you only work with people you're meant to serve, and if you're on a, you know, if you're at a six-figure um, level in your business, then you should be able to, you know, make the decision and say, if you haven't done it until now, at least now you, you should be able to make the decision and say, there's all, there's people I work with and there's other I don't work with. And if you right. decide to only work with certain people that um, have certain characteristics and criteria. I think you know the recurring revenue model or the recurring payment model, the retainer model is beautiful because these clients, and as we you know we both know that these clients they're not going to call you first of all four o'clock at night, in, at night, and they're also not going to call you every single hour of every single day. They're going to no, tell you it, that's exactly the point I want to make. They don't have time for that, right? They're busy. You know they call you when they have an emergency. And right. you know, they, they get to spend the time with you when they have sessions um, or when we have sessions with them. But um, if they have an emergency, they will call you. But many, many times we're able to fix that in 10, 15, 20, 30 minutes. You know, it doesn't, right. take, it doesn't take seven hours to be on the phone with them to fix that. No. Right? And you know times. what? Even when I have an hour scheduled with most of my clients, they, as soon as they get on the phone, they say, I only have 20 minutes. And, and I, whatever we're going to talk about for an hour, it gets squished down to 20 minutes because that's all the time they have. It's yeah. not that they don't value it and think it's important, but they, they can't like have flowery talks about the weather. They don't have time, yeah. right? The more and more successful they are, the busier they are, right? Yeah. And they, you know, they're not gonna, they don't actually want to talk to me for three hours. Yeah. I that, mean, there's, a, there's a great point you just mentioned, and it's about, um, you know, there's, there's certain people who, you know, when they pay a thousand, dollars they want to get a certain amount of time with you and there's other clients and you know exactly what i'm talking about then there's other yeah. clients they pay a thousand dollars for something and they want to get a result for that exactly and i just love working with people who just want to get results because exactly. you know they want to get a result for that thousand dollars in an hour or in 20 minutes and not they don't want to spend 10 hours with you they want to get a result they want to get that quickly, and if they can get that result and it's valuable enough, they will pay you whatever you ask for. So that's that's a great point you 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 made there. Yeah, and actually, how I figured that out is you know, clients when I first was talking to prospects, they would ask me how much time I was going to spend on their account, and I was like, well, I don't know how to answer that, right? I mean, because I really truly don't, because um, it's an unlimited model. So if they're in crisis, I'm going to spend more time, and if they're not and everything's going well, I'm going to spend you know, fewer hours on there. Like, so I couldn't equate it to a job and how many hours and, right? But people think in that model still. They think about, okay, this is an employee. If, if I'm paying an employee for 40 hours a week and I'm paying them this, but I'm paying her on a part-time basis and consulting basis, then I should be able to, right? Because they're trying to anchor the price. And so I actually looked up a bunch of articles about not trading time for money 
And the thing that stood out to me was the point that um, all it, the question is just, do you actually care? Wouldn't you rather if I was able to solve your problem faster than take longer? I love that. And, that, and so when people have those questions and they get stuck in that time uh, model or that sort of old way of thinking about time, uh, that's all I say. Do you, wouldn't you want me to actually solve your problem quicker than yeah. slower? Yeah. It's a great point. That's good. Excellent. So let's, let's move into another topic. Now, over the past one, in, one or two years, you've made... You've made incredible, you have, you have an incredible growth in your business financially as well. You've right. had an incredible growth period there. Now, yes. many, many times we as entrepreneurs, when we go through such a growth period, there's usually, I mean, at least the people I work with or talk to, there's usually a big challenge when it comes to time and personal freedom right. and uh, yes. free time and time with family. Now, tell me about how you've been able to manage everything together that incredible personal uh, that incredible business growth financially mm -hmm. um yeah. and still being able to have that personal freedom okay well what I, again this is my this is my tool right so i um live and die by my calendar i just do right so what i do is i block out time for various things Right. One of the things that I notice in myself, I, I have this bad habit of, of um, as I get busier, I stop taking care of myself as much. So like my first thing is like I need to take care of my my body. My, oh, I need to go to doctor's appointments. I need to go to dentist appointments. So I actually have I actually have blocked out time in my schedule for personal wellness and and care. Right. So that's that's number one because I can't help anyone. I can't help my clients, I can't take care of my kids, I can't do anything if I'm sick, right? So so that's the first thing, so I block that out. And then I block out in, in four hour blocks, I have four hour blocks in my calendar for different things. So then when I'm scheduling, I just schedule within those blocks, right? Yeah. yeah. So since I have two, essentially I have two programs, I have the one-on-one -on -one program which is called Move Into Your Business, which is where I actually move into your business and work alongside your employees and help manage them f with you from a financial perspective. And, they're, and, and then I have the, um, my newer program, which is for smaller businesses, more money mentoring, and I have time in my schedule blocked out for that. Okay, okay. And, and then I have business development time because I can't have a business growing with no business development. Yeah. And, and there's things I had to learn along the way. Like I started working in my bedroom. I didn't even have an office, right? I was literally doing my business on, um, on my bed, on my lap with my laptop, right? And then I was like, this is insane. I need an office. I cannot be in my home and, and get work done. I just couldn't. And, and I have a two-year-old. So, you know, forget it, right? I had to be able to solve that problem and find an office outside of my home. But I didn't at first, when I, when I had no money, it was like I did whatever I had to do. But then I was like, this is becoming a problem. I'm on, I'm on the phone with clients and the baby is crying in the background, right? And these are clients that are you know, paying me significant money. Like, it was okay at first, but you know, how long are they really gonna love that? Probably not that long. Yeah, yeah. Right. So it's really about upping my game a little bit more as I went along, right? Okay. So like I started out with a $300 laptop and then I was like, this sucks, right? I cannot function with a $300 laptop anymore. Like it's taking way too much of my time to mess around with this $300 laptop. I went and I bought a $1,500 laptop, period. Like I. Once you get up to a certain income level, those things are insignificant compared to how it helps you with your time, right? Yeah. So I just don't, I just don't like guilt trip myself about spending money. But I will say, the other thing is that I got my personal finances together, mm. right? I'm a finance person, but my personal finances were an absolute disaster. I owed eighty thousand dollars, right? I had zero money in the bank, zero, right? So I spent three years 
paying off debt. I live in a tiny apartment. I have now saved up money for, for a down payment on a home. But I focus on making my personal financial life as easy to handle as possible. Okay. So that my fear was that my income would grow and then I'd just spend it all, right? Mm -hmm. Like I would still be worried about money because I spent every extra penny I made, I'd spend, yeah. right? So I said, I have to figure this out before I start making more money because as soon as I start making more money, I'm going to spend it, right? So I worked really hard on that. And that's actually what I te am teaching people that have smaller businesses is that how to, you know, your business is your life and your, your personal life and your personal life is your business. It goes both ways, right? So if your personal finances are a wreck, then you're going to be stressed about your business money, right? So it's all about, you know, getting, if you can do things like reduce your expenses in your personal life while your income is, is growing, right? You just don't have any stress anymore. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's a good point. Like I have no stress. I, I don't even have to think about buying a fifteen hundred dollar computer. I just don't. It's a non-issue. Yeah. I just I just have to like go buy it. That's yeah. Right. Okay. It just changes everything. So I'm not of the belief that you grow your business and then and and your goal your it's not my goal. Your goal is to have a mansion, or your goal is to have this fast car. Like that, that, that doesn't do it for me, right? My goal is to grow my business so that in five years I have two million dollars in the bank. That's what drives me. Yeah. Because that sense of security, that um, reduction in fear, will do more to propel my personal and business life and everything else than any other thing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So like it's the it's the one thing, right? That book, the one thing. What yeah. is the one thing you can do to make everything else in your life easy? Yeah, yeah, I love that. That's great. So there's basically two main things that you mentioned regarding personal freedom. The first one was to make sure you schedule things in your calendar and they're sacred. So yeah. if you schedule time with kids, they're sacred. If you schedule yeah. time for yourself, they're sacred. And not yeah. letting business take over the entire calendar. And also, so that maybe, maybe there's three things. And the second one is to making sure that you split maybe days or the half days into different responsibilities. Like one of them yeah. is business development. The other one is maybe working with one-on-one -on -one clients in sessions or something like that. Another one could be, you know, creative work. Another one could be right. sort of things like that. Appointments, like doctor's appointments. Appointments, right? exactly. Right. Exactly. Right. What I love about your, your Fridays as well is that I always get your updates on Friday morning because you say, uh, um, you know, every almost every Friday now I see it. You know, you stop yeah. working at nine a.m. or something like that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I love that. I love that. I, my goal is to be done, actually, one hundred percent done work, and do my Friday update. You know, of what I did that week by noon. Sometimes it goes to one. Like I'm not like overly strict with myself, but every other week I have a full one and a half hour massage scheduled for Friday at one oh, thirty. That's great. Right. So. I have to leave that day. Every other week, I'm out of the office by noon. I have to be, right? Yeah, yeah. Because once I have something like that, I'm, I'm like one of these people that's, I don't cancel appointments. I just don't, right? It's rare. I have to be like in the hospital to cancel an appointment. I mean, I had just given birth to my daughter and somebody called me, a client called me, and I picked up the phone. Like, I just, I live by appointments. That's how I function. I need that, um, Predictability. I mean, as in corporate finance, everything's on a schedule, right? So yeah. it, it makes sense that yeah. like that's how I function. When I first was self-employed, I was like, "What the hell do I do with my time? Oh my god, I have all this time, right?" I, I, it was like I don't know, wandering around the house, and like it was yeah. crazy, right? But I realized that having that really—I wouldn't say rigid because I'm not that rigid about my schedule, like. I will sometimes have something that has to happen and it eats into another part of my time. That's okay. Yeah. Like I don't I don't stress out about it, but because it's a block in my calendar and it's like color coded block, then I see, oh, you know what, when I'm scheduling this appointment for my dentist, I have Wednesday and Friday afternoons, that's it. Those are the yeah. two times I schedule all my appointments. Yeah. I love and, that. That's great. Um 
you know, it's just simply about having these appointments. And, you know, they don't have to be appointments, but it's, I think it's more about having something scheduled in your calendar and not move it. Even if it's just, you know, an eight-hour block of business development or whatever. Right. Um, that's great. And then the third thing, before I forget it, you mentioned is get the best tools. Because, you know, when you're at a certain level, um, and, you know, I know exactly what you're talking about because of the laptop, because I just, I bought myself a $3,000 MacBook Pro, <laughs> which is, you know, insane, but it's, it's, you know, it's what I need for my business because that's, that's the, you know, that's, that's the biggest asset, the hardware asset in my business. And if I can only save an hour a, mo a month or even, you know, a week, right. that's huge. That's a lot of money. So uh, I'm more than happy to spend that amount of money on a laptop. So get the best tools. Yes. That's a great one. The best tools, not just hard tools like that, but even, um, even software thing, or thing, or yeah. things, things like Sandbox, right? It costs seven dollars a month. I could stress out about the fact that it costs seven dollars a month, but you know how much time I save using Sandbox? Yeah, it's yeah. ridiculous, yeah. right? I I literally have hundreds of junk email that are just I'd never actually even see. Exactly, I can't get distracted and go down some path of oh, there's a sale over at blah or whatever, right? It's it's totally removed from my vision, yeah. right? So there's things like that that are even small things that you you should you know once you get to a certain level of having enough money, I'm, I'm never going to say if you if you can't buy food that you should go buy a three thousand dollar no, laptop. of course, I'm never going to say no. that, right? But I will say I had a, I had a perfect example that happened to me a few weeks ago. I got um, there's a coffee shop across the street, and I like to go like a couple times a day, and, you know, break up my day. So I go over to get coffee and I go get to the door and it's pouring. So I'm like, eh, I can run over, right? I got caught in this like huge flash flood thing. My pants were wet all the way up past my knees and I was drenched head to toe, right? I got my coffee, I came back and I was like, this sucks. I'm like completely wet. What do I do? Do I go home? Do I? And I was like, this is stupid. There's a solution for not getting um, soaked in the rain. It's called an umbrella, right? So I'm like, what do I need to do to solve the fact that when it rains, I still want to get a coffee and I don't want to get drenched? Two minutes later, I ordered three umbrellas from Amazon and had them delivered two days later, and I have one in every location. My office, my car, my house, my other car. I now have six umbrellas total. And I never lose my umbrella. I always have an umbrella. In fact, I have this umbrella. <laughs> Look, I have the umbrella right here. I love it's it. It's in my office. You're really good with systems. You're very, very good. You're very, very good with systems and processes to to make sure you stay productive and stay focused. So that's great. You know, thank you very much for uh, for doing this interview. I really appreciate it. Um, where can people find you? Um, they can. You can always find me on Facebook. That's where I live. Ultimately, you can find me on uh, More Money Mentoring on Facebook. And you can talk to me as much as you want. It's it's actually um, just starting up. So uh, you you see me. I'm on Facebook. I don't know how much I'm on Facebook, but it seems like I'm on there all the time. But I'm actually um, really fast at Facebook. Excellent. Perfect. Right. Because because I have to be because I'm you know I have different groups I'm in and I'm always making comments because I don't know I just like to talk to people. I, it's part of, um, like I was saying, the one thing, the, the, other than the income, the other thing I like about, um, I, I like about having a job, and that's what a lot of people say to me, like, I don't know what I would do if I didn't go to the office and talk to people every day, right? So like, I better figure this out. Well, I talk to people on Facebook all day long. I'm talking to you across the world right now, right? Yeah. Like, I, I, I actually decided that I needed to talk to somebody virtually, have a lunch or have some kind of interview or something three times a week. I have to do it. Yeah, that's right? great. I love Otherwise, that. I'd just I be in my office by myself. Yeah. Right? Yeah, that's another great so point you made actually, there. That's actually in my schedule. Okay. Because right? I don't want to be like this person that is behind my computer of ruling the world and not actually talking to anyone. Yeah, like, so true. How fun is that? It's, I mean, some people like that. I, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna cut it down. But for me, you can tell. I could talk. I, I could 
I could have this interview go for 15 hours. <laughs> right? I like to talk. So I just yeah. work it into my life. Excellent. Awesome. So, Sarah, thank you so much for doing this. I really appreciate it. I hope I can have you on here another time for another topic. So that was great. Thank you so much and enjoy the rest of your day. Yeah, it's been fun. And next, when I get my podcast going, uh, I'll interview you. Awesome. Thanks a lot, Sarah. Take care. All right. Great. Thanks.